How's it going? Hey, good. Nice to see you, man. Nice to see you too. So I wanted to chat to you about, you know, just um, how you, you know, I know that this has been repeated many times, but um, how did you get um, to the last house on the block? Just a little uh, story yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah, well, that was the first, one of the first things I said, and that just sort of came out, wasn't it? When uh, you and I talked, um, uh, well over a year ago now i suppose isn't it when was the conference was i think it wasn't I think this I was, year was it, it was yeah over year. a year ago yeah yeah over a year ago yeah, sort yeah. Of summertime wasn't it yeah and that um that just came out and it's funny i um i I've remember used that actually recently. i've actually said last house on the block a couple times because of that yeah right and it came back to me again recently and and actually there was a little bit of writing about that as being the last house on the block and um yeah, it sort of came up in the context of um, I was talking to someone recently who has come across this message and, and was um, reporting that it, it, it had ruined all of the other seeking things that that person was, was enjoying doing, um, not necessarily with practices, although that, that can happen, of course, um, but with, um, let, let's say, sort of teachers or teachings and, you know, more a more traditional approach to this. And um, and it came back to me then is that, yeah, in many ways, it's the last house in the block, isn't it? When, when that sort of coming to it in that there's for some, not everyone, but for some, when they come to this, there's nowhere else to go, because if nothing else, it will ruin the seeking they're still seeking, of course, but it, it'll it'll ruin, it'll spoil a lot of the, um, you know, perhaps some of the other things, you know, like teaching, you know, more traditional things, teachings and so on. Um, but I was, I, I suppose I found myself in the last house on the block quite by accident, but um, I think really um, I had already kind of um, left behind a lot of, more traditional ideas and approaches and um oh you froze for a moment there that's all right you're still there um but uh, yeah i had in some way or other and i think i've mentioned this in some way or other there had been a kind of a um uh, a sense that my efforts to bring about what i felt i was looking for although i could couldn't really tell you what what that was you know I may, may have used words like enlightenment or oneness or whatever but um, um, yeah I kind of felt that on some level that that my efforts to bring it about not not that they couldn't work necessarily but they didn't seem to be working there had been a lot of effort at various times sort of throughout my life to try and um, find something I suppose but I, I, I could again I could never have really told you what that was um and there were yeah there were lots of different um sort of approaches and um one of the first things that i got into a lot when i was 21 was I, I got very into sort of martial arts um for the physical thing you know i'd never really sort of done anything physical i was never sort of a physical person so i i suppose on some way you know as when i was still experiencing myself to be a person. I was trying to fix that and, and, and mend that in some way. I didn't feel very physically confident. Um, and I wasn't very, you know, I wasn't physical at school. I was never in the football team or anything like that. And um, so when I came, yeah, I, I sort of, 
um, was attracted to martial arts and that kind of thing for confidence and all of the things that a me feels it needs, of course. And um, but there was very much a kind of an esoteric side to it. It was actually a Zen school that 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 um, that taught martial arts. And of course, you know, I went into it for the martial arts practice, but then just got very intrigued by the kind of philosophical side to it. And it wasn't Zen as in any traditional Buddhism or religion. It was a much more kind of um, well, what the, I suppose, the, um, the guys there called modern Zen. So it was more a, a kind of a practical, and it was referred to as a kind of the, the martial art practice being a training for the body and the Zen being a training for the mind and that kind of thing. And uh, so it, it, was, it, was a, it was a way to survive in life, you know, physically, I suppose, in some way or other, um, but also mentally on some level as well to but it was all about strengthening the mind you know there was very much a kind of warrior philosophy and um i loved it i absolutely loved it there was nothing wrong with it i, I naturally drifted away from it in the end and met some great teachers who were really inspiring and and in many ways i would say um shaped my sort of growing into adulthood in a positive way i had a positive thing and that's that's totally, you know, that was awesome. That's totally cool. Um, so I, I, I enjoyed that very much. But the, the tendency with me was to um, get into something very intensely. I, I, you know, with that training, I got to like a second degree, second down black belt in, you know, relatively quick period of time. And, and I started teaching when I had a black belt. So I was teaching karate and, and this kind of modern Zen, if you like. Um, most of which I've forgotten now, I have to say, you know, what the uh, concepts were really. Um, and got very into it for a while, but then what always happens with me, regardless, or in the story of me, regardless of what it was and, and how much I loved it, I'd get bored. There, there was still a need for more, even though I felt every, every time I would find something new, I would think, this is it, this is, oh yeah, you know, and no exception to when I came across this message in that sense, as I was when I was still a seeker. But then I would get bored and I would naturally just sort of drift away from it after a while. So um, that was kind of the main thing. I did that for several years and um, I really enjoyed it. Did you ever get into meditation? I got into meditation. I was like a meditation yeah. junkie for quite a yeah. while that yeah. did like yeah. two hours, three hours and... Yeah. Tell yeah, me about heard, that. Like, yeah. what, what did you do there? Uh, yeah. Um, well, I, um, uh, I eventually, I started meditating probably more in my thirties. Um, I would sort of drift off and do things and then come back to, I suppose, spiritual seeking as I saw it at the time. Um, and, um, I tried different things. Um, you know, the, the sorts of things most people do, I suppose. I went down to a local bookshop and got a book on meditation and how to do meditation and meditate on chakras and all of that lovely stuff. And um, I ended up settling on, I met someone who introduced me to something really simple because I always felt I failed with meditation. You know, I was kind of the guy sitting in the room who was sort of peeking all the other people who look really sort of blissful <laughs> and serene and thinking, oh, no, they're getting it and I'm not getting it. Um, I, I would occasionally have those sorts of experiences of bliss and serene and, and that kind of thing uh, with meditation. Um, but I, I, I met someone who introduced me to um, a book called, um, what was it called? Uh, Open Heart, Open Mind, I think, by Father Thomas Keating. And it was, um, it I've was that book, contemplative. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I love it. I, I've still got it on my I think I still have it. Yeah, I, I do have it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, lovely. I, I really, really, really um, enjoy that. And he had developed based on really kind of really old um, Christian mysticism in a way. And, and the, these sorts of phrases that were, were found in the Bible, like, I don't know if it's in the Bible, actually, you know, but things like God's first language is silence, all else is poor translation. I think Rumi said that as well, didn't he? But there was something like that as well. So the idea was to find silence. So that's what it then became about. It became about finding silence and, and union 
union with God, so to speak. Uh, I never had any beliefs. I was quite, um, I, I sort of had a natural aversion to religions and people telling me what to do um, in general, but particularly in kind of religious contexts and so on. Um, but it was a very simple practice um, called centering prayer. And I really enjoyed it. And I was sort of still doing that as I came across this message. Um, but I was a real self-help book junkie. I really, um, you know, anything I thought I could find in um, something that I thought would be beneficial. But I had drifted away from traditional spiritual teachings as such and was listening more to, I suppose, communicators um, where there was, it felt like there was less um, pressure to do something. Because as I say, on some level or other, I, there was just a sense here that um, I wasn't going to bring this about myself because on some level or other, it, it had been realized here that self was the problem. And that uh, I suppose that the, the sort of natural deduction from that would be, well, it's self who sits and meditates. Even if that's self sitting and meditating, trying to meditate self away, <laughs> it's still the intention is still self-driven as far as I'm concerned, really, that's how that seemed to be. So I, I was kind of open to when I heard it was Jim, I heard Jim Newman, first of all, when I heard the concepts, when I heard the message for the first time, it, I, there was an openness, I think, in a way, in that it sort of um, confirmed what I had was already sort of sensing about more traditional approaches or, or any sort of in approach with an intention to find oneness or dissolving the self, so to speak, um, as, as, as didn't feel right. And that's all I, anyway, I can describe it. Yeah. It's kind of like stumbling into something, you know, that um, you've never heard um, about, right? It was just so fresh and, um, but it was also very scary because everything that you've learned prior apparently was not making sense anymore. Like all of yeah. the Zen, probably kind of like your martial arts yeah. and all the self-improvement. Yeah, I think a lot of that had just sort of naturally fallen away, to be honest. Um, so I didn't, um, I mean, I, I struggled with the message in, in the way anyone does when they come across it, regardless of whether there, there is an openness to it or not. Um, but I think a lot of the ideas or it was just a sense, as I say, that, that I could do something to bring this about. Um, it's a quote I remember you saying, was it an Alan Watts quote that the greatest ego trip is to try and get yeah, rid yeah, of the ego? Yeah, the greatest ego trip is to get rid of your ego. That's right. Yeah. Something and like it, that. Yeah. Yeah. It was something like that. You know, it was the, the greatest, you know, it just, this, there was something that felt very self-centered in the centering prayer, if you like, in a way, even though that wasn't the intention, the intention was to sort of un undo or unravel, um, um, I don't know, whatever is, is keeping me separate from God, the universe, oneness, wholeness, whatever, um, whatever word I fancied at the time. Did you go through that phase of kind of like a relentless, kind of like almost like an obsessive seeking? Like I remember grabbing a book and then be, even before finishing the book, I would have started three other books and then have this library and not just kind of like physical books, but I would also have Audible and I would have um, Kindle, like all stocked up. So I'm, I'm yeah. never kind of like didn't have anything to, um, and I would Google kind of like um, or, or search, you know, awareness or consciousness at that time. Yeah. Did you go through that phase as well? uh sort of yeah i was just sort of I, i'm not the most sort of tech savvy i suppose it was more uh, as i say sort of hitting the local bookshops and secondhand bookshops for self-help books and um i would go and sort of dig out um uh thomas merton was a was also another guy writer that i really you know contemplative that i really was starting to enjoy as i came across this message and of course uh, you know, this this message kind of spoiled all of that in the end, even those guys who seem to be in some way or other closer, although, of course, you can't get closer to what's being communicated with the, 
non-dual message, so to speak, of course, but, you know, guys who had, um, who seemed to be closer perhaps than say um, a self-help book I was reading about, you know, a direct path to happiness and this is what you do and, you know, and, and trying to in some way or other something that contemplative approach was was much more gentle i felt in in some way and and more natural and um um despite reports to the contrary about this communication there was something that always felt very free and very natural about it to me as well in in some way or other with this sort of uh, when i heard um, jim newman speaking in the message and then of course i discovered tony and andreas newman and um, uh, richard sylvester and um kenneth madden as well of course and lisa lennon and uh, um didn't find naho until afterwards shall we say um, but yeah you know th there are a few people communicating in this way but something about that felt very it was confronting, yes, of course, but there, it would just seem so free. I could sort of sense the freedom in the communication, even though I didn't get it and I didn't understand the words in some way or other. Um, but what, what the words did seem to do, the concept seemed to confirm what I had sort of, was be, sort of felt intuitively about my efforts to bring about conform on some level. But I, I, yeah, I had lots of different books and I would get um, I would get into something quite intensely for a little while and I would read three or four of the books, you know, maybe not all of them. And then I would suddenly find something else and then it would be that and then it would be that and then it would be that. And I was literally in the middle of doing all of that um, when there was the apparent falling away, of course, um, with this communication, um, you know. Um, yeah <laughs> but it does ruin your seeking that's the in in in, in <laughs> you know it well it did here and, and other people do report that to me that once this message has been heard on some level or resonated with um it's almost impossible to go and listen to perhaps teachers or communicators they were listening to before who who aren't communicating in this way when when i was having to seeking i would um cross-reference you know what i'm saying um go to different book and go to this different book and try mm. to find connections and everything when i encountered mm. this communication it was like oh it doesn't really connect with anything mm. it was just uh again kind of like the last house on the block that doesn't have any mm. history or anything like that of connections mm. to anything mm. and um i remember um encountering richard sylvester's i hope he dies soon so that was yeah. the book that was yeah. my introduction and then I found um, that Tony Parsons, I didn't know Tony Parsons at that time. And then Jim Newman, kind of like the same, kind of like, you know, um, uncompromising speakers that you mentioned. Um, and I went to, went, looked at Jim Newman's and Tony, I would look at Tony's videos and I would get really frustrated. There was a resonance, you know, there was this openness. I'm like, oh, wow. But there was also an anger coming in because I had this held on to belief systems of, um, everything you know from lineages to traditions and all that kind of stuff and this doesn't seem to have any connection to that and you're i mean i've heard your story um you've talked about it a bit online haven't you so i'm, I'm sort of familiar with and we've talked on the phone you know in the last sort of year or so and um so I'm, I'm kind of familiar with your story and i imagine um that because there was such an extensive seeking history there with traditions and and even being a teacher of a traditional approach to something or, or to enlightenment let's say um that there was more of a there was more being challenged there in that sense that seems to be the way with this communication it seems to be very challenging for people who have a long history of um sort of being involved with teachings or even teachers themselves or communicators themselves it seems to be very challenging when this when this when they come across this message was that was that the case would you say yeah 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 there was uh, there was a, a dropping away you know what i'm saying not kind of like almost kind of like an irrelevance of all the things that i've read before so i thought there yeah. was a connection and then when I encountered this message and then i you know um i get binged this communication for quite a while until i could not take uh -huh. it anymore 
yeah. think I would be watching. I would schedule like an eight hour. I've said this story so many times, well, like an eight hour. Kind I'm of laughing like a, because it's just us. Uh, yeah. 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 Totally. I, I get it. Yeah, no, yeah. Or I would rewind. I'm like, maybe, maybe um, Tony said something or Jim said something that I missed. Yeah. And I would rewind it and, and I would write, I had this, I would be note taking at this book, you know what I'm yeah. saying? That I would be taking all of these notes yeah. Yeah. until um, there was almost like a no interest in it for quite a while. Right. Because I kept on saying that I will never get this. What's the point? I will yeah. never get this. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Until it was just uh, sitting in a chair and. You're still an effort to get it, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I will never get it. It's still an effort to get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now I, so now what do you listen to? I like listening to um, fiction now <laughs> yeah, on right. audiobook. Yeah. Terry Pratchett. Yeah. <laughs> I like watching science fiction now. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like before yeah. I thought it would be a waste of time. Kind of like, I'm like, oh, I should not be wasting my time with some movies and everything. Um, I saw that you posted Matrix. I love that movie. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that was the movie that, um, it inspired me to go and start doing martial arts and and oh. um yeah there was a kind of a philosophical um element to that film wasn't it it has nothing to do with non-duality of course but um it, it, there was something else you know so it, yeah it, it sort of opened the door in many ways to um to um uh you know perhaps another way to be so when yeah, they, totally. What, yeah, I'm excited about the new film. Yeah, yeah, I me too, me movies. too. If we were in the same city, we'd watch it together because I love... Oh, yeah, know. that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, when I saw that, um, I didn't get into the martial arts because in my high school, that's all we did. We had martial arts in my high school. Oh, right, Lucky, okay. yeah? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, um, but I got into the, um, the awakening kind of like, you know, message or there's got to be something other than this mm. kind of like messaging mm. that, that I got from, from, uh, matrix and, uh, but it has nothing to do yeah. with this as well. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Yeah. Well, there's the, 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 um, the writers in that, I think they drew on a lot of kind of philosophies, didn't they? Different philosophies. And I, I don't know, I, I, I had a book about it, um, about the film and all the philosophy behind the Matrix at one point. And, uh, I think it's a mixture of Judeo-Christian, um, mm. some Buddhism, a whole mm. bunch of different stuff that, that was all combined in this, in this kind of like, yeah. it's, but ultimately it's a hero's journey. It goes with that, um, what's his name? Yeah, again? Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell's, you know, that, that cyclical kind of like, mm. a, yeah. there's an apparent um, realization and there's mm. a, a journey, a call for journey. Yeah. I can't remember what, what the Joseph Campbell's was, but that's mm. why it was so entertaining. Mm. So that, that idea that something like that opened you up to, did that sort of confirm a sense you had already had on some level? Do you think? There like, are some there. Yeah. A little bit, you know, in the story, of mm, course, right. There was there must be like, something more. There must be something more. And mm. I think what I did is I started meditating after that mm. that was kind of like my my not, not i'm not really sure of the timeline now but that had some mm. sort of effect on the character mm. of mm. wanting to find something yeah that's did you get that thing. sense too yeah well as a child i think there was really always a sense of um this can't be it this can't be the, the, there's just gotta be something better else. than this yeah, I was always really sort of interested. You know, I loved Star Wars and fantasy films, you know, as a kid and that kind of thing. And um, uh, <laughs> this is that uh, my my dad reminded me of something recently that I'd completely forgotten about. And when I was about um, maybe five, six, seven years old, I wrote a poem and he he couldn't remember it, but he... <laughs> He told me about it, and it, it sounded to me like at that age I'd written a poem about separation, about what it is like oh, to wow. feel separate. Yeah, I can't remember the context exactly. I mean, he did tell me more, but I won't, I won't go into it because it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and my parents were so concerned, and my teacher was so concerned when they read it because they thought it was such an unusual thing for a you know a young child to reflect on, I suppose that they um they had a meeting <laughs> they, they they had a staff meeting 
uh, they, they they wanted to discuss Radical it. at an early age. Writing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, see, I was I was pissing people off even back then with talk of separation and so on and so forth. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's really funny. And that was only recently that um, my dad reminded me of that. Yeah. So I so yeah, there was obviously something here even at a very young age that that was in some way or other sensing more or the possibility for something else that that I, no, this this is missing something and that's that's fundamentally that 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 is that sense to be separate which is a, of course the sense to be a someone which is separation and, and so so even sort of back then there was a, a apparently a, a, a reflecting on 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 that and there had been a noticing of that separation and i don't know however I, a six-year-old would express that i don't know exactly i can't remember the, the words of the poem or anything so yeah so no i just wondered if maybe there there, there, there was something like that i have a very similar story too and i think you know my parents remind me of this when you were a kid when i think i, I got angry or something and i asked them why did you bring me to this world hmm so there was this separation, kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. and I think um, I've always, always a good boy. Like I went to Catholic school, as I mentioned in, in the, my chat with Tony, um, always just kind of like uh, always wanted to be the top of the class because my dad trained me that way. Kind of like, in a, you know, I was the, I'm the eldest of three boys and one girl. So I always had to be this example. But there's always this rebel. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. <laughs> that absolutely. wanted to shake yeah, up yeah, things yeah. and and yeah, yeah, and definitely. and look at yeah. different things. And I think that's what what was with this character was there's always this um, resonance with rebellion, resonance yeah, oh, with yeah, radical. Yeah. There's yeah. got to be something different and everything. Yeah. But it, it it's funny because it it lands nowhere. But there's this always this seeking kind of like yeah. energy, and um, I guess you can say now that. Um, that seeking energy is just relaxed. It's no no longer there. It's just kind of mm. like okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 But all throughout the history of this character, is always kind of like looking at every nook and corner, trying to find yeah. something. Yeah. Did you find that too when you were growing up? I don't. I don't know if I was looking for something necessarily. Um, I don't remember that. Um, but there was always. A sense on one level that the that it wasn't fulfillment. You know, there was there was there was something I was missing. There like was, something uh, always lacking, right? There's mm. something lacking. There's got to be something more than this, better than and, this. And not, yeah, no, totally. And 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 whatever that was wasn't to be found in the kind of ordinary everyday whatever it is. <laughs> Ironically, but then of course what we what we talk about. Um, um, the non-duality is is the most ordinary everyday thing you could imagine of course um, so uh yeah i did um as i sort of got into my teenage i i, I played in bands you know i played guitar and, and started growing my hair long and wearing t-shirts with skulls on and stuff like that anti-social <laughs> and stuff so yeah totally i totally um get the uh the um uh anarchist sort of side of things yeah totally which was another reason why i think i was kind of um open to this message when i first heard it i just loved the anarchy of it i totally just i thought it was wonderful it, it was i was sort of aghast but at the same time i loved it it was just like yes <laughs> yeah yeah i yeah. loved it I, I i really you know i really enjoyed that sort of part of it um oh totally totally um you know when i was a spiritual spiritual teacher there seemed to be a conditioning that happened that, you know, all of a sudden I was uh, more meek, you know, and, and uh, was uh, trying to portray yeah. that role of, uh, of, uh, oh, of uh, yeah. you know, nothing wrong or right about that. It's just what's happening. Yeah. But Exhausting, when, eh? when this communication, um, when I first interviewed um, Richard, um, there was just this anarchy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this kind of yeah. like yeah. this freedom that, that um, can't be described. Mm. And um, that's what I like about this communication is, is mm. the resonance with that, um, mm. yeah. something that can't be figured out. Mm. There's nothing to yeah, figure totally. out. Yeah, totally. There's nothing to do. Yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah. yeah. But as I say, I think there was a more, I think more there was an openness um, to that, um, I think, when, once I stumbled across it as I did.
and it was just after that it was just yeah everything else just all of the other um interests books um sort of seeking wise were just you know i just couldn't entertain it and and i don't know do you find that now when you hear someone reads you a spiritual quote or something like that it just it just blows right over it's just you know it does it's yeah, things it does. i used to read and think were, were deeply moving and and powerful i just <laughs> okay yeah. it's lost its meaning you know i used to hold on to these quotes kind of like what we did in their mm. quotes kind of like talk mm. that we had I, I used to have this book of quotes and and i would have um meaningful you know um quotes that i would have a personal mm. preference to it right now when i read you know you know what sometimes when i go through facebook although i'm not there quite a lot it's when i see all of these statements they just seem mm. like words now you know what i'm saying it's, oh, it's totally. really nothing yeah. it's really mm. nothing yeah. um i wanted to talk about this is kind of funny because um you know, they say when there is an apparent dropping away, well, no one dropped away, that people would think that you would be shouting at the mountaintops. Um, I had a yeah. moment like that, but just once with, with mm. I just wanted to speak to someone about this because it was just so ordinary. Mm. And it was just, it was also, um, wow. So I called my friend oh, yeah. and then I talked for a couple of hours just telling him mm. there's never been anyone here. Yeah, there's yeah, nothing yeah. happening. And I was just for two hours, I was just kind of like talking. Yeah. Yeah. A month, months later, he said, were you, were you high, Emerson, when you're talking to me? Yeah. And it's funny because I did not know who to talk about this. Did you find something mm -hmm. similar? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, here there was writing a book. And in, in some ways, that was that um, expression. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because, yeah, I mean, it's just, it was just, uh, I mean, here, the, the apparent falling away was, was quite sudden. And so it was a shock. Um, and and just the aliveness was just. I mean, what can you say? Um, there was an attempt to express that sudden aliveness, which apparently hadn't been there before. This sudden aliveness, sudden absolute wholeness, absolute spacious. Everything just opens up doesn't it and it's, yeah and, yeah and, and and because there's a character here that likes to write and, and has always been creative one way or another I suppose um then it just felt like my I guess maybe my way of doing that was picking up a pen and expressing that in some way and um never really with much more of a thought than I might share it with a few friends or people or something like that um at that stage um because I would also say that there is an inspiration and a passion for that freedom. And, and I think those who feel moved to communicate that freedom in some way or another, no one can communicate that freedom to someone, of course, but I think that that comes out of an inspiration. And I, yeah, so I would say when I read those types of quotes, because they are most often written by a me to a me, it 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 the, the it really only inspires that personal energy that feels like it's got to try harder or feels like it has to become something or realize something so those sorts of quotes or ideas or that whole thing just obviously falls away with the sense to be a person as well you know so so um there was a, a kind of a natural inspiration that, that came up for this freedom um but uh yeah, the, 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 the stuff that appeals to the person, which I think is always very much an emotional sort of appealing. Um, yeah, just, you know, you know, it is what it is. And, and I can still read poetry and enjoy it. Um, but yeah, there's no looking for the deeper meaning in that. There's no, there's nothing here trying to connect with that in any way anymore because it, it's, it's a poem which it, the poem itself is absolute wholeness being expressed as a poem, regardless of what that poem says. But there's no need to feel inspired by that in some way or other, or be moved by that. And a, be, a being moved might happen, listening to music, a being moved might still happen here in, in some way, but it's totally different 
when there's that seeking energy that's trying to get something from everything all of the time. Yeah, I, I totally get that. I, yeah, when, when I used to, you know, I used to be so serious in seeking that I didn't have any room for anything else. I didn't have any room for fiction, mm. for movies. Mm. I really just spent my days, you know what I'm saying? You know, seeking non-duality and trying to figure it out. Um, mm. When did you once when, say to? Did you once say sorry to interrupt you? Did you once say that you only ate fruit off trees at one point as well? <laughs> I did. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think at one point I was, you know, I had a. I was really desperately, I had a, a giant glimpse, you know, like maybe 15 mm. years ago. And that started mm. kind of like it was the catalyst for me becoming a spiritual teacher and, and teaching what I thought I had, right? Because but mm. there was a giant glimpse, but the, I didn't know it at that time, but I think the me came back and made it into a practice, meditation practice. Mm. Like I can mm. get here. Mm. And so to kind of like further progress that I ended up um, going vegan and mm. became raw vegan. And then at one point, I only ate fruits that fell off a tree yeah, for no harm, thing. right? So I was yeah. following that, you know. It was almost so kind of like an audition for... Kind of... Sorry, go ahead. So Sorry. when you were hungry, did you just wait under a tree? <laughs> no, no, no. There's, did there's... you shake it? Was, was, <laughs> would that be cheating if you shook it? No, there was... You can you can buy, actually, you know, fruits that... Maybe it didn't even fall from a tree. <laughs> yeah. You can buy, a yeah. you know, a, a bushel, you know what I'm saying, for, for, for people that are in that right. kind of diet. Okay, um, yeah. They're mostly fruitarians, and they usually can like wait for a tree. I mean, a, a, mm -hmm. a, a fruit to fell off a tree, and I was just eating that. Mm -hmm. And I was really hungry most of the time. So people thought that oh. I was just super enlightened because I didn't speak. Because oh. if I spoke, I probably yeah. would have fainted mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I just didn't have any energy. And I think I was losing mm -hmm. a lot of weight mm -hmm. and closing my eyes more, thinking about burgers and bacon. I um, thought you were, you were at the going up to level 100 that's right, that's right yeah. yeah that's right and <laughs> that's so funny now but at that time i was just so serious so it was just very um yeah. hardcore yeah yeah hardcore yeah. but it's coming that comes from such an innocent place though as well oh course, yeah it? oh so yeah it's, to it's all totally innocent um in most cases oh totally there was one time that i that i didn't even eat anything and i was just drinking this is really funny there's this um, cold tea that you can buy in in a can. Mm. Uh, it has guarana. You know, mm. guarana is kind of like a... It's like a natural caffeine. Kind of like a ginseng, kind of like or natural oh, caffeine, right? right? Yeah, yeah. And the name of the um, that drink was Enlightenment. Ah, okay. <laughs> how, many, how many were you drinking a day? I think about three or four a day, you know. And I was right. just really wired and just, you know, yeah. saying a whole bunch of stuff while I was teaching. And... Oh. Uh, um yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, i told you about the uh, uh i the one time i took a decongestant tablet before a meeting did i tell you about no, that no no you didn't tell me that. i told you about the, the other week i had a blocked up nose i took a decongestant tablet. oh yeah yeah that's right me, that's right yeah which made me feel quite fast yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know how the meeting went necessarily but, uh, oh that's right it was a little bit of, woo, woo, woo. Yeah. that was actually a great meeting Right, I can't. I can't. It was oh, it was a couple of meetings ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I used to. Ah, uh, oh, just the so many funny stories, you know. And and now that I'm an accidental speaker, you know, I speak um, privately. Um, it's almost like uh, home. Like if, if you never left home, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like what mm. what what I was t telling Tony about this that speaking. Mm. It's. I, do, I can't even explain it. It's just so yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Just this, this passion come out and, and it's just, uh, yeah. How do you, yeah. you know, when you, when you're speaking in, in your meetings in your zoom meetings, mm. uh, gosh, it's really difficult to say how it is. Um, uh, well, I mean, there's an enjoyment, I guess, but that's really only sort of a sort of, reflecting on talking i suppose or speaking in in in, in one way or other um but it, it's just um yeah I, I don't know i can't i don't think i can really tell you how it is yeah. um, <laughs> so to speak but it's um it just seems very natural mm, um, yeah 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 and and um 
uh, very um, immediate, it which is. of course, which of course this is. So, so the the communication that, that obviously goes on in 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 the meetings that I'm I do, uh, and with a few other speakers, of course, um, is that immediacy, and it's it's also coming out of that unknowableness or no thingness as well of course so it's not like there is any uh when the speaking is happening and, and that's that's how this is it's not like there's anything really experiencing it or knowing it at the time there might be a memory of sort of something that was said or i'll speak to someone perhaps who was at the meeting and or who will remind me or so will call me and said oh you said this last week and i wanted to ask you about that and i'll remember but yeah uh, it's it goes so fast have you have you noticed that yeah it seems to go very fast very i quickly. used to do 60 minutes but now it always goes to almost two hours always break right. that two hour thing and since i'm the one since i don't have a host i'm the one that's doing it i'm kind of like oh wow it's it's it's, it's you know it's it's been two hours already so i usually but it, i just keep on going can keep, keep, keep on going talking about it. When I used to do lectures, when I was a spiritual teacher, I remember preparing. I would have yeah. a whole bunch of notes, kind of like what my topic would be. Um, it was almost like a performance, right? It was yeah. almost a, um, yeah. But this speaking is, is the, it's the first time I think that the speaking just happens effortless effortless and yeah. and all of a sudden because i always second guess what i was talking about before too yeah like i would read something but blindly mm -hmm. just kind of like say it anyway because mm -hmm. it's coming from us you know from a lineage or you know a, a great book of spirituality or something and although right i had doubts thing, about what's that and the right way to do it as well of course that's right yeah, yeah. So this is the first time I can say that, you know, speaking uh, radically and uncompromising that there's just pure honesty uh, yeah. coming from no one. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it just feels so natural to yeah. speak about this, not relying on anybody because there's no one. I, I almost said there's something very human about it. Um, but I think natural is a better word really yeah yeah natural and and e even when i when i was still seeking when i was obviously still a person so to speak when i heard this communication there was something very raw and honest in it in 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 an energetic sense in in the naturalness of it and the freedom of it it just seemed a lot of um some other sort of communicators and might get into who or what or when necessarily um it seemed very complex and and convoluted sometimes as well and there would be very long 10 15 minute long answers to questions about something or you know a concept of some kind or other and you know usually awareness or something like that and i think that complexity in a communication like that comes from a person talking to a person because the person experiences itself to be complex so when you have one person communicating with another person the nature of the communication seems to reflect that complexity in that yeah. there is an answer in that complex dualistic um dream <laughs> yeah totally, totally there was something so simple and direct about this communication which i know some people don't like you know i know that well no no person likes that of course um but some um, some people find that quite objectionable don't they of course yeah it's very challenging because the you know the, the communication is not speaking to anyone it's coming from no one and speaking to no one so mm -hmm. when there's someone there with expectations of getting something mm -hmm or coming from a source or a, a knowledge or a wisdom or something, um, then there's an expectation of getting something. But when this communication is communicated, um, it's just really not, it's not really talking to anyone. And that's so fresh, it's so natural. Do you think there's something in the person 
when they do get offended in with this sort of type of communication that it's because they're being they are not being communicated to um, i was going to say being ignored but of course they're not being ignored that's not that's not the right way to say it but almost like a you know almost Deep like when you're not off. giving attention to uh you know to uh, to someone and they get upset <laughs> I can only because I'm, I'm sure that's how the, me would perceive that, you know. Just yeah. Like, oh, what's going on? Well, it was really what's challenging, you know, when when I when I first uh, I can only speak on 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 the apparent story of of this character yeah. when mm -hmm. I first heard it. It was it was like a cold shower, but also like a boiling water at the same time. I was getting mm -hmm. grilled, and at the same time uh -huh. there was this freshness. Yeah. Because yeah. I had this this I held on to it's kind of like um I I. I explain it this way it's kind of like you've been banking on a spiritual bank that you realize has closed it's, it's never never really received any of your no interest or any deposits uh, yeah. so it was yeah. it was almost like a um like the pension you don't really get yeah it's almost like you've been scammed <laughs> for a long long time and someone's telling you that you've been scammed but you don't want to believe it you're kind of like no 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 because there's this you know this book support that this other book support that this mm -hmm this um, um tradition supports tradition, that apparently and, support it. Yeah. and yeah. you know and, and i was thinking the, the thousands of years that this came and here i am you know a a bringer of this knowledge and then when yeah. someone tells you but there's no one there and there's no knowledge you're like uh -huh. what yeah. it's like the biggest plot twist right you can like you're watching mm. <laughs> kind of like have you seen that mm. movie the sixth sense yeah and at yeah. the end, um, I see dead people, all that kind of stuff. That that it it felt like that. It was kind of like mm -hmm. what? The... Didn't see that coming. I yeah. didn't see that coming. Yeah, that's what this communication is. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. but if you don't want to accept that, so there's a lot of anger that comes out, right? There's a lot of resistance and and a lot of ridiculing, you know, this communication. Um, but when it's heard with openness, it's like ah, this is actually a really natural communication. It's so honest. And um, yeah. I, I actually think that reaction is is completely understandable. Oh, well, totally. <laughs> it's it's totally. <laughs> it's like it's almost like you know, um, yeah. Well, that's a very sane and rational response, in in some way or other. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean that's fine. That's that's, that's okay. Um, Oh, yeah, and totally. Really, as far as this is concerned now, um, those sorts of some of the other um, speakers, perhaps I was listening to who weren't communicating in the same way as, let's say, Jim or Tony. And, and, um, so now, I mean, really now it's 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 it, it is a completely different conversation. And I think the misunderstanding arises um, when um there is a person trying to fit the two together somewhere and that's that's quite common isn't it in meetings it's like well, oh totally yeah but how does what you're saying fit into what i know <laughs> and that's the problem it doesn't you know. yeah it doesn't at all um a lot of people want to categorize this as spirituality and um wants to kind of like categorize it as you know non-duality as another spiritual journey or something like that. And, and I think I told this to someone that this is actually not spirituality. No, no, totally. No. What do you, what, what would you define spirituality as? I or really do don't know, even how, know anymore. You know, I really don't e practice. even know anymore, but you know, because I was in that spiritual practice for quite a while and spiritual teaching for quite a while. So this is almost like a, um, this is just another word, you know, it doesn't really, it's like an unteaching. It's almost like a, an unknowing of some sort. Yeah. So everything that I've learned before is almost like a, has been purged, right? It's like, yeah. A, yeah. because I, I held on to these spiritual beliefs and this is not about belief systems at all. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, a, yeah, it's like, it's a, it's a giant plot twist, right? You're kind yeah. of like holding on to all of this, you know, thinking that you have um, gone far in your spirituality, you have suffered, you have had blissful experiences. You have had an apparent awakening, you know, in the dream anyway. So you think that you've run the full gamut of spirituality, mm. but it's still not enough. Mm. 
Yeah, well, there's still so something like, missing. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so what's mm. what's missing yeah. then? I've I've had that blissful experience that, yeah. you know, you um, and then you think you found a way of life, you know, a practice. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's, there's nothing wrong or right about that. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong or right about that. No, of course, and yeah. and I I know people or have friends who still are involved in spiritual living shall we say and it, 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 for appearance sake it would seem that it has improved the quality of their lives and how they experience themselves they are still experiencing themselves of course so there is still separation there so yes of course they will still be seeking sort of one way or another um, but i think for me um spiritual spirituality was always about using a set of principles to try and become a better person. And I think that's what it came Yeah, for, for me, I think it was, you know, a long time ago, I thought it was, how do I become the higher, the higher self? Isn't that still a better person, though, wouldn't you say? That's the same thing, yeah. yeah. How is it to be a, a higher me? Person. Can yeah, I have yeah, a capital yeah. M now? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it's the yeah. same thing. And um, I think someone gave me a book um, recently. I was I was talking to, um, and then they suggested a book. It's a book I can't remember the title. It's a it's a neuroscience book that they have found out that there's no such thing as a self, no such thing as a consciousness. Of course, there's no time, and there's no. Um, if you hear that snoring, that's my sixteen year old puppy. <laughs> Can you hear? No, I didn't, no, I didn't hear. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so they basically, uh, you know, um, proven in in scientific ways, it's the neuroscience that there's no self, no uh, free will, no consciousness, and no time. And it was quite fascinating. How have, they, how have they done that? I mean, whenever I did look at it, and I haven't in years, it was more that they just couldn't find it, and and so they sort of deduced from that that they couldn't. They couldn't find the source of consciousness, so they sort of deduced that it was. It's still, it's still that. It's still that. It's still kind of like you know, right. doing experiments, and they can't find that there's yeah. a there's a self, or they can't find the consciousness, or they can't mm -hmm. find time, they can't find free will. Um, it's good for entertainment, but it's still missing. You know what I'm saying? Missing the mark that there's no one. Mm -hmm. It's quite fascinating to read though, because I'm like, oh, okay, right. they're catching yeah, up sure. a little bit, but they have a long mm -hmm. way to. Yeah, it, it comes, it goes in circles and stories and circles and mm. stories. It's quite fascinating, though. Mm. My sense is it will never be known because no. it is, of course, unknown. No way, yeah. But apparently, um, the sense to be that self or that consciousness can dissolve. And I found the fascinating, you know, study that they did that they can actually, is it six seconds that, you know, with the free will, that they can actually... A machine uh, hooked up to like a brain yeah. can yeah. figure out if you're going to choose coffee or tea yeah. or go yeah. left or right. Yeah, the BBC did something on it. I think it was the BBC. I mean, way back, it was an old program, um, way back in the 80s, maybe even, where they were doing something where they were getting people to yeah, yeah. hit a switch at a certain, when they saw a green light come up on a screen or something, they had to hit the switch for like green or red. Or, I can't remember that what the actual sort of parameters of the experiment were necessarily on what they were doing. Um, but yes, they, they evidence that the brain has already sort of done it before the That's finger right, yeah, or yeah. thumb has hit the button, basically. And, and already they've managed to discern already that it's made a decision as to red or to green. Or I can't remember what, how they were doing it, but something like that. And I was talking to someone about this. I'm like, imagine if they have this, you know, um, sensor on an app on a phone. Mm. imagine you're kind of like you know you're going to going to go to a coffee shop and you're like well according to this i'm going to pick a latte oh okay <laughs> yeah. it's just a funny yeah. thing yeah, yeah 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 well when most people hear um no free will and no choice they think determinism oh that's right they think yeah. that it's being suggested that, that cause, it's already you know, to that. and we're just along for the ride kind of thing and that's totally of course not the case <laughs> that's right yeah yeah, there seems to be a big um, confusion about that, you know, with determinism and mm. free will. And I think I had a really long conversation in an interview that I did um, a while back. And and the the big difference, basically, there's never been anyone here. 
and it completely cuts that cuts that um, difference. To be on the um, path, and 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 that that also means there is nothing moving. That's right. Yeah. Do you need to pause for a minute? No, no, no. I'm just I'm just trying to mute my dog oh. snoring back and forth. Oh, I can't hear it. Don't worry. I can't hear it. But I've got an elderly elderly neighbour with dementia who likes to knock on the walls, and she started knocking. Um, okay. in the last meeting, but I don't think that was picked up. <laughs> no, no. Um, there's, I forgot. Okay, uh, I forgot what I was going to to chat to you about with. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So, so when you know, one of the common questions that come up, you know, when 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 I hear, you know, when when uh, in in meetings and everything, it's about family and friends. In, in, in what sense? In what in, sense what, did they, do they did notice a difference or was there yeah. any changes yeah. or anything like that? What's, yeah. what's, your, what's, your, um, what's your comment on that? Well, of course, when the me dies, and uh, the, all me's die, so to speak, there is no me, of course, in the end to die. Um, and someone was asking me about this, you know, well, what's your relationship like with your friends yeah. and your family? And, and in every way, um, in, in many ways, it hasn't changed at all. But in every way, it's completely different because there is no yeah. longer that which experiences relationship to family and friends. Friend, friendship seems to continue. Mm -hmm. Family seems to continue. But it's, it's a completely... Let's just say different. That's not right. I mean, this is the industry. It's the same, but it's different. Course, isn't it? Yeah. It's the yeah. same, but it's, it's different. Yeah. yeah. Nothing yeah. changed, well, but everything because, changed. It's it's weird too. Yeah, because obviously there was the absolute conviction, sense, yeah. Yeah. sensed conviction to be something here. Yeah. And then there is something different there. in in yeah. in there that is my mum so to speak or, or my mother or my, or my my father and there is still obviously an appearance of mother and father and so on and there is still it's not that there isn't well there, there there's just no one having a relationship with someone there is no one to have a relationship That's to right, someone yeah. in that in that apparent way anymore as there was in in that dream and it just now. becomes so obvious that there's been no relationship at all Mm. it's just yes yeah of course yeah yeah. Mm. yeah it's totally imagined yeah it's it's totally imagined because that which experiences itself to be separate needs to connect and the way uh, the way it connects with others is is by having relationships but i think that's the same for the whole for the, that, that seems to be the sort of dichotomy or the dynamic to that whole thing isn't it it's 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 the the apparent me is because it, it is separation has to find a way to live in relation to what appears or to life and and, and the funny thing is I, I think that includes the experience of itself as well it, it's sort of on some in some way the main relationship that the me is sort of trying to establish and and improve is a relationship with itself so <laughs> <laughs> in some way or other it's like the me is separate from itself as well it's like it's a, like a reflection of a reflection of a reflection it's it's complete illusion it's oh completely yeah completely illusory that's a good way to put it i like that neil but it that's it's almost like that i think in my book i called it and it's like a hallway of mirrors you know when the self goes seeking for mm. itself or yeah no self all it will see is itself because it's like it's in a room full of mirrors you know it's like that bruce lee movie isn't it yeah it's just it just can't see outside of itself to be able to find a no self or a true self or, or anything it doesn't see anything outside of that experience but on, in some way there is the a separation within that self selfing or selfness um because when you talk to most people they, they talk about how they're working on it particularly people who are involved in a therapeutic community or what they're you know, they talk about what their relationship with their self is like at the moment. <laughs> it's just <laughs> oh, totally, totally. It's just yeah. yeah. I need to get. Well, I need it is to get, what it is, but yeah, yeah. yeah. 